Hey everybody, my name is Storm and today I'm going over how to make a Borderlands style item pickup system. This only includes the visuals when you interact with an item, it, the item flying flies towards you. So with that said, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to go over what I have here. So I have a basic blueprints folder with just a simple third person character a data folder where all my data goes into like blueprint interfaces enumerations and all that and then i have a maps folder which pretty much just contains the map so without further ado let's just get right into it inside the data folder i want to make a new folder and call it mm, interfaces and what we want to create in here is a blueprint, blueprint interface, BPIF, which stands for blueprint interface, which is just a prefix and an underscore. And we want to not call it, for example, item. You can call it whatever you like, whatever is most fitting to what you're working on. In my case, it is item. After opening up the item, in here we have a function and I'm going to rename this function to item interaction and we want one, uh, one, one input parameter and this is going to be a actor object reference and this is going to be to move to actor because we're gonna later supply it with the actor we want the item to move towards. So, with this done, I go into my blueprints folder and make a new blueprint class, which is an actor and called A for actor underscore master item. With this approach, you don't need to inherit every item from every other item, but I still recommend uh, inheriting from other items. So you have one master item where the groundwork logic is in and then you just pull and add what you need in sub items. So in here, I want to first of all include our blueprint interface. So under class settings, we want to include BPIF item. After we've done that, um, we want to go to our event graph. Oh wait, do not forget to set the actor to replicate. And then we want to go into our event graph, right click, and I think we called it pick up item. No, we didn't. Um, I totally forgot what I called it. Item interaction. Let's let let me rena rename to this to pick up item because it's not just an interaction, it's pretty much just a call to pick it up. Item in pick up item, and it needs to be with the event pick up item. There we go. So currently, if we would just interact with this, this would try to run on client, but we need to later call on the client that we want to forward it to server, and then we want to call this event. So. But we get into that in time. So we have our to move to actor. We want to promote this to a variable in here. And this is move to actor. Then we can add some rerun nodes in here. Because we're going to have to add a branch in a second. After this, we want a boolean, which is going to be is interacted with which we just set true if we have interacted with the item but we only want to interact with this if this is not set so if this is not set so if that's this is false we want to interact with it Let's move this around a bit, make it a bit cleaner and easier to look at. Okay. 
after we've done this, we want to create a function which we need to timer over. So in here, we want to make a function underscore um, move item to actor. And if we would call this only once, we wouldn't move it towards character. So one thing we want to do is we want to set up a timer by function name. There we go. Oh, timer function set timer by function name. And the time on question is our move to actor. There we go. And we want to set this to looping and to in the iteration time to 0 0.01 seconds. After this, I promote this to a variable, which is our timer handle reference. And we need to get into that function now. So here we have our function. And the first thing we want to check is, is valid? Because we need to check every time if the move to actor reference is valid. If not, we want to we want to set you to false and clear the timer. Clear timer event and set the default move to actor to nothing. And I'm gonna do that after that. There you go. There we go. If it's valid, we want to on the top row set um, call um, set actor location. This one, and we can just get a reference to self. There we go. And the new location we want to move to is we want to. Um, the interpolate to our target. We can also use the interp to, which is just the uh, reinterp to constant, which just interpolates at a constant rate. So the bottommost item is our delta time. Uh, wait, no, that's our interpolation speed. And I'm gonna hard code this to a 15. Our delta time gets delta time seconds. Our target is get actor location. And our starting point is get actor location. There you go. So every time we now loop through this, we move closer to the target. And in the case of get actor location, in our case, the actor location is in the center here. So now we could do, because now we would just move it into the player, but I don't think that will work that great for long term because it would just get stuck inside the player. So we want to make a cutoff distance. So we take vector one minus vector p2 and then get the vector length, vector length, length. There we go. And if vector length is, uh, it turns to a square. Okay, need the other one. There you go. A is less than B. So if it's less than, let's say, 25, we want to. Clear the timer, clear the related timer by handle. And then we could technically call a function where we add an item to the player's inventory. I'm not gonna do that because this should be a simple tutorial, but um, how you could do it is you could add a new function to here, have a few parameters in here for like item weight, item type, item ID, and so and so on. And then you could just call the function 
and populate it with information about the item and then deal with in, with it inside the player. I'm not going to do that. But when this here reaches this, I want to call destroy destroy actor, which should destroy self. So next thing I need to do is I need to go into edit project settings and I need to go into collision and add a new trace channel because we want to trace for item to be able to call we want to pick up the item. So in here default response we set to ignore because we don't want all items to interact with this channel. And the name of it should be something like um, item channel. There we go. Now we have an item channel. This item channel we can set to the item if we give it a actor reference. In our case, and not an actor reference, an object reference. In this case, I'm just going to use this cube. And in the collision presets, I want to set it to custom. I want to ignore all channel, but item channel. And I just realized it's a trace response and not a collision response, an object response. So I guess it works. Okay. So it's a dynamic object. Then we need to go into our character. But first, let's let's just place like one of uh, a few around the area. Might be a bit big, but we will see. Actually, yeah, let's let's size them down a bit to like um, keep this locked 0 0.25. It's generally better to already have some prepared meshes for this specific thing so you don't have to manually change the size. Okay. In here, I'm gonna add a arrow component towards the um, for the ca camera. To get a forward vector towards where we're looking at. So when we for example press the button F key, uh, I recommend just making a proper input for it for example as interaction or something like that. And with this F key we want to do a line trace by channel and our channel will be item channel. And for debug purposes, we want to keep it on persistent. Eh, well, for duration. Can I set the duration? Yeah, the draw time. Yeah, five is fine. Okay. So we get our forward um, look at direction. And we take our look at direction. We get the forward vector, forward vector. And we take a look at direction and get actor location. Eh. Get worm location. There we go. And our starting point is this. And our end point is this times int. And this is our trace length. So for now, I'm going to set it to like 1000. Um, if you're working on a more serious project, I recommend to promoting this to a constant variable and so you can change it just in here instead of always having to jump to the specific location and then change it there. So we want to take vector plus vector and this is in the end channel. So if we now go into game and we press F we can see our little trace and now we can see we hit the object uh, but I'm this is probably not the best way to do this, um, but I want to change something. I want to change the camera location a bit so it's a bit easier to work with. There you go. So now we look above the player and we can hit the item. Um, there you go. We can hit the item. There you go. And when we hit the item, we want to run on server a event. So let's make another custom event. We call it OS interact with item. And we want to call it run on server. 
and our input will be just the hit result. So let's just plug this in here. And this is gonna be our hit result. And in here, we wanna check if we actually hit something. If we hit something, we wanna call ours interact with item. There we go. Maybe also a valid option would be to run this section of code on the server just to double check if the player can actually hit the target. Yeah. So here we call the function. We want to break the hit result. We're going to get the hit actor. We need to check does implement interface. And the interface we want to check for is our BPIF item. If it does implement the interface, we want to call move item, no, um, item, pickup item, there we go. Target and object will be self. And if we, oops. Oh yeah, uh, I need to really quickly refresh this node because the name of the parameter changed. Okay, so now if I haven't done anything wrong, we should be able to pick up items if I can actually hit them. There we go. We picked it up. Okay. The third person template wasn't the best idea but I think we could for making it a bit more visible we could set this to 0 0.1 and change the camera boom to like a zero visible I think that should work now if we don't, yeah, we see our head. So let's move it slightly in front of it. Um, this is, I'm pretty much just doing this to visualize the system. It should be, like it should be already working. So if we, yeah, we can now see the item moving towards us. There you go. But it's currently a bit chunky. And it's, if it's not chunky, it is very quick. So, I played around with the speeds a bit and came to the conclusion that an interpolation speed of 5 is very nice and very nice to look at. And I changed also some other small thing. Oh no, I only changed the interpolation speed and changed back the time of function by name to 0 0.01 seconds. So if we now look at it and we interact with an item, you can see a smooth transition and I'm sorry for just uh, hacking the character together uh, if if you work on something you probably have a better character it was pretty much just about the system itself so if you look at an item if it's in our range we can pick it up and when it hits us it gets destroyed with the said I hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you have any questions make sure to post them under the video or join the discord and ask there if you have any further requests about tutorials let me know with this said wish you all a nice day and i hope you learned something goodbye